Okay, there's a separate rule when you do have multiple terms in your denominator. Okay. And so if you're rationalizing a denominator with two terms, Okay, now, the radical, there could be a radical in both terms or just one term. Okay, but if you're looking to uh, rationalize a denominator that has two terms, again, what you're going to do is simplify each radical. And so if you can remove <coughs> any perfect powers, you want to write each radical in simplest radical form first. And then you're going to multiply by the value of 1 again. And you're going to use what's called the conjugate. The conjugate means if you have the sum of terms, the conjugate is going to be the difference of those terms. If you have the difference of terms to start with, then the conjugate is the sum of those terms. So it's the same terms, opposite sign between. So if you look at this, there's no way to simplify these radicals. So we're going to multiply by a value of 1. Using the conjugate, the conjugate is the same two terms, root 3 and root 2, opposite sign between. So what sign are we going to put between these? We have a plus, so here we're going to use a negative. The reason we do this is based on the expansion pattern of a plus b times a minus b. If you recall from algebra, when you expand this or FOIL this, your first is a squared, your outer is negative ab, your inner is positive ab. What's going to happen to those two terms? They cancel their exact opposites, and then you have a negative b squared. And, and so using this pattern or in this process, when we multiply these and FOIL them, it's going to eliminate the radicals. Because here across the top, we get 1 times root 3 minus root 2. And in the bottom, if we take this first term and square it, what do we get? What is root 3 squared? It's the base of 3. Minus, and what is root 2 squared? 2. And so if you simplify that all over 1, when you rationalize this fraction, you wind up with root 3 minus root 2 as your simplified form. Okay. Let's try one more example. And let's say now we have a variable in here and only one radical term. Okay, but it's still a two-term denominator. We're still going to use this same process. So when you choose to rationalize, you're going to rationalize by the same two terms, root 5 and x, root 5 and x, opposite sign between. So there is a negative here, so we're going to change the sign to a positive. And when we do that, we get across the top. Always leave the top as factors. There's no reason to expand it out. That's a uh, source for a lot of mistakes that students make. And leave it as 3 times root 5 plus x. And now when we simplify the denominator, we square the first term. Okay. Root 5 times root 5 is just the base 5. Always a minus in between these. And when we square the next term, or the last term, x squared. And so this would be our rationalized form. We've gotten rid of all the radicals from the denominator. And so that would be the simplified form for that fraction. All right. Really quickly on page 19, try those last two problems. See if you can rationalize those denominators, please. All right. So <coughs> for the first 
can't simplify the radical, so we're going to rationalize by multiplying by the same two terms, root 5 and 3, opposite sign between. So it had a negative, so we're going to change that sign. And what that allows you to do is multiply 2 times root 5 plus 3. Again, there's absolutely no reason to distribute that through. Okay. And then in the bottom, root 5 squared is 5, always a minus. And then 3 squared is... 9, or again, when you multiply those, you're always going to wind up with this form, the first term squared minus the second term squared. And so 5 minus 9 simplifies into negative 4. And can you cancel common factors here? 2 goes into 4 twice. And so you wind up with your answer all across the top. You have root 5 plus 3. And in the bottom, you have a negative 2. Okay, so this is one possible form of the answer. Keep in mind when you have a negative sign, the negative sign can be moved around to various places in a fraction. So we could also have negative root 5 plus 3 all over 2. And that's an acceptable form of this answer as well. And we could also distribute the negative through. So negative root 5 minus 3 over 2 is an equivalent form. As far as the multiple choice goes, you need to be able to recognize or find any of those different forms as answer choices. Okay, the last example here, again, it's a double term denominator. We're going to rationalize by multiplying by the same two terms. 3 root 5 and 2, opposite sign between. And so when we multiply across, we get 2 times 3 root 5 minus 2. Again, no reason to distribute that. And then in the bottom, when we take 3 root 5 and we square it, okay, think about what you have. Is the answer going to be 15? Is 3 root 5 times 3 root 5 15? Okay. When you square this number, again, applying this rule, you have to square all the parts, all of the all the factors of the product. So 3 squared is 9, root 5 squared is 5, 9 times 5 is 45, always a minus. And then the second term, 2 squared is 4. And so your answer winds up being the simplified form of this. So either 2 times 3 root 5 minus 2 all over 41. So this is one possible form. We might distribute the 2 through, if that's the case. Now at the very end of your problem, you can distribute if there's nothing that can cancel. So 6 root 5 minus 4 over 41 would now be an alternate form of that answer. Okay. Oops, 